well. It has been a while since I have made a video, but it is good to be back. I've had fun making this video. So for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Adam, and a little background on me. Um, about a year and a half ago, I had plans to go traveling overseas, but because the world got crazy, those plans got canceled. Plan B was to do a little traveling in the US and stumbled across some van life videos and I thought, that's pretty cool. I had never met anybody that had done that before, but I was like, I could see myself doing that for a little bit. So decided to go for it and I bought my first van in April of 2020, built it out in about two months and then hit the road in July of 2020 and I was out for about five and a half months and I came back just around Christmas time to work on the van a little bit, visit family for Christmas and some friends. And then I hit the road again to escape the Wisconsin winter. And I was on the road from January to the beginning of June. So if you watch my last video, I know I kind of left you hanging. And uh, if you've been on my Instagram, you know what I've been up to. But for those of you who are not on Instagram, I'm just going to fill you in on what I've been doing. You might be able to see behind me, I'm sitting in a van. But no, this is not my first van. I decided to build another van. So the van market is very hot right now. Vans are going very quickly um, from dealerships and people who are going to build and people who already want a van that's done. So I thought maybe I should build another van just for resale, just to make some money since I haven't been working for the last year. So I was obviously playing with a lot of ideas, there's a lot of different routes to go. But when I sold my last van, I had a lot of interest in it. People really liked the design and I sold it extremely fast. So I thought, well if people like the design, why not just do it again because I already know how to do it and I could document from my old van how di you know dimensions and everything from the last van to make it easier to build a second. So. It all happened fairly quickly, within a couple of weeks, where my van was gone and I had another van. And it was only like a week. It was very fast. But everything just seemed to work out well and decided to set a goal for myself to build this new van in 30 days, which I was able to fulfill and I did it in 29 days. So that was definitely not easy, but I was glad to set that goal for myself. It was a lot of fun to... Um, just kind of press myself to um, get it done in that amount of time and I obviously wasn't going to compromise on build quality or anything like that due to the speed I thought you know if it takes me longer it takes me longer but I was able to do it I'm extremely happy with how this van turned out I I think I improved on my design in a lot of ways I think everything's just built better more sturdy just because I did it once I knew what worked what didn't work and I've seen a lot of vans on the road so I got a lot of ideas but all in all, I love how this van turned out. So as promised, here is the tour of the new van. You'll notice it's going to look a lot like the last van, but I'm gonna just kind of go over things and show you certain things that I changed and um, certain things that are just a little bit different about the build. So starting with the van, it is two years newer than my previous van. It's a 2019 and I bought it with just over 10,000 miles on it. It's in really good shape. Um, had a couple things that I need to fix, minor cosmetic issues. Um, but nothing major. It has the same engine and it is the same exact wheelbase and roof height as the last van. The only other difference in the front is it has Bluetooth pairing for phones, so that's actually really nice. And it does not have cruise control, which I may add before I sell it, I'm not sure. Honestly, I don't use it a whole lot personally, but that's the only other difference. Moving up on the B pillar, you'll notice that there is a control panel for the diesel heater and a fire extinguisher and the diesel heater is underneath the swivel seat and you talk to any van lifer and swivel seats are a must they are so useful definitely a little bit pricey but what you get out of it is just so worth it in my opinion and a lot of other people's i know from there we'll move down along the driver's side first there's a bookshelf and last time i just used plywood for the bottom but this time i had some extra live edge from my countertop so i decided to use that as the bottom slab and it kind of gives it a nice look Moving to the bed, it is the same design as last time, though I structured it a little bit differently. It, I feel like it's more sturdy and it's probably a little bit lighter than it was last time. So basically there are just two latches on either side of the bed and then you just pull the bed across and then you just fold the back sections down 
to form the bed and then just readjust the cushions, which I do not have yet. They were a six week lead time, so that obviously wasn't going to fit into my 30 day build, but they'll be here hopefully next week. Underneath the bed, you'll notice four collapsible bins, which can be pulled out from the front side of the bed, or they can be accessed from pulling out the bed and reaching down from above. There's also another cupboard with storage space, and that is also where the diesel fuel is stored for the diesel heater. This was different from my last van. Um, the last van, this is where the electrical system was, but I relocated that this time, and I think it's a lot better. The cabinets up above are basically all the same size as they were before. The only thing I really did differently is I built shaker style doors for them, which I feel like add a lot to the space, just making it feel a little bit more professionally done. And I also mounted them in a way that made them a little bit more sturdy than last time. Moving to the kitchen area is basically all the same. I have two dimmer switches, which one controls the lights underneath the cabinets and one controls the house lights up on the ceiling. And also there's an outlet um, from the inverter and um, the inverter switch and then just a USB 12 volt charging port for phones and other things like that. I have a two burner propane gas stove which is fueled by an 11 pound propane tank which is mounted underneath the stove area in a sealed and vented box. And the refrigerator is a single zone 44 quart and it can either be a freezer or a refrigerator. I decided to use all soft close drawer slides on this fan. That was new from the last one, but I really like how they work. And they also, for these smaller drawers, seem to work as pretty much latches so they don't come open while I'm driving, and that's worked out really well. Moving to the sink area, I'm really happy with how the sink turned out. Last time I did undermount the sink, but this time I decided to top mount it. Um, basically, I just kind of liked how it looked, and the advantage of undermounting it was I had a cap that I would put on top of it to extend the counter space and also kind of like hide dirty dishes if you didn't want to do dishes. But I found myself not really using it for that purpose very often. Like typically I'm, I really always do my dishes right away and it just felt like it was a pain to take it off every time and make sure it was on before I started driving so it wasn't sliding around. So that's the reason for changing that. And then beneath the sink, there is the water pump and accumulator tank, and then just a basic five gallon pail gray water system. And then for fresh water, there is a 20 gallon tank that is mounted underneath the van. And one other thing to mention is where the toilet is stored. It is stored on this small pull out drawer area, and it's just Velcroed um, to the little slide out plate. That way it's easy to take off. And of course, I gotta mention the Live Edge slab. So if you saw my last van, you know I had a piece of Live Edge in there as well. And that piece was ash, and I decided to go with walnut for this one. Um, it was definitely quite a bit more expensive to do it this way because walnut is high right now, but it, I think it's high because people are into it. So I decided that the extra expense would just add a lot to the living space. Moving to the passenger side cabinets. So the tallest cabinet is typically where I keep my uh, backpacking backpack, uh, a broom, a lot of other things. There's just a lot of room in this particular cabinet. This wider cabinet is just where I've kept a lot of miscellaneous items in the past, a lot of camping gear and whatnot. I also mounted lighting underneath this cabinet. Um, that was new from the last van because I didn't run a wire over there. And then this countertop is just a basic butcher block, um, also with epoxy on it. I was able to epoxy the slab and the butcher block at the same time. Moving below the countertop, I decided to mount my trash can on a pull-out drawer. Um, this was a little bit different from the last van. Um, if you remember, I used to have a barrel and that slid underneath the countertop, which was a little bit more extended than the last van. So I redesigned it a little bit here. And then beneath the trash can, there's just a very small compartment um, for storage. And I found that my jack for the van actually fits in there very well. Next is where the electrical system is located. And as I mentioned before, it used to be under the bed. Um, I did move it over here just because I felt like it would be a lot easier to access and work on. Really happy with how the system turned out. Seems really clean, seems to be working well for the most part so far. Still working on little kinks, but that's why I'm on a test trip. I also mounted lights in the cabinet area, so that also helps when working on the electrical system or just storing anything in this cabinet. Moving forward, I have a hook for my backpack or really whatever you want to put there. I always find my backpack is just something I'm grabbing all the time, so it's really convenient to have it there. Above that is spice racks, 
And just to the right of that, I mounted a little bitty mirror just so I can make sure I look perfect in the morning. Yikes. Looking up to the ceiling, not much has changed from the last van. Used quarter inch tongue and groove cedar planks and um, also still have the max air vent fan and eight LED lights in the ceiling. And just like the last van, another option for sleeping is I have two hooks mounted for a hammock and that's actually where I've been sleeping while I'm on my little test trip here. Moving to the outside, you may have noticed that the tires definitely look a little bit bigger than a normal Ford Transit, and that's because they are. Um, I had similar tires on the last van. These ones are just a little bit different size and um, otherwise made by the same manufacturer. The only reason I went with a different size is because the original size I had on the last van were back ordered and they were gonna be like six weeks out. So really, it's, I think it comes down to personal preference on which tire you like the look of better. Personally, I did prefer the last van a little bit better, but really it doesn't make much difference in drive quality or anything like that. Moving to the roof. So this roof rack is definitely a lot different than the roof rack I had on my last van. That one was actually a steel rack and I had a friend of mine weld that up for me. This time I decided to make it myself and to try and use aluminum. So I did this for several reasons. I was hoping to save on weight a little bit, hoping to save on cost by doing it myself, and also just the amount of time it takes to have somebody else doing something usually takes longer than how long I could do something. I also added four little tie down hooks just in case you ever want to put a boat up there or really whatever you want. And I also have a 52 inch light bar which is mounted right on the front of the roof rack. And that pretty much concludes the tour. So like I said, I'm really happy with just the build quality, how this van turned out and the color schemes and really just all in all, just I love the van. I almost don't want to sell it right away, but I think it's probably the best decision for this time. So. With all that being said, it will be listed for sale relatively soon. I'm not sure exactly when, but I would expect within a week or two, you will see the listing um, and I will post that on my Instagram and Facebook. So if you are interested in purchasing this van for yourself, make sure to be on the lookout for the listing in the next couple of weeks. Thanks for sticking around for the tour and the little update, and I will see you guys in the next video.